Hi, I'm The Mango, and over the next month, I'm working to transform Botum Town, finishing areas that couldn't be finished due to the season ending early, and expanding the area with loads of new builds to explore, while also putting my own spin on the already existing builds. Last week, we worked to expand Green Starter Home and the Midnight Alley, turning it into a huge underground village inspired by Harry Potter. I'm really excited though, as this week we're going to be focusing on Scar's builds, making some slight edits to his giant starter base, and then working to build the mega base he unfortunately never got to really begin. After this week, we'll still have Mumbo, Pell, and Impulse's bases left to transform, with new episodes being posted weekly. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos when they come out. Anyway, let's begin. So if you're not aware, this is Scar's starter base. As you'll notice pretty immediately, it's absolutely huge, so we got a lot of work to get done today. I decided that the best place to begin would be where Scar began, with the first wagon. This was the first cart of a huge train, which he said he built to roll into a new continent and start a new life and a new business. Those are his exact words. I went back through every single season 8 video that Scar made to collect notes on everything he mentioned about the base to make sure I was accurate and kept his vision alive. Like in my other videos, I'm just going to go over the starter base, adding in a couple of extra details to make it fit my style a bit more, so any other areas I add on top don't end up looking too out of place. As you'll know by now, I always like to try and find a middle ground between my style and the original builder's style. The main difference I made to the wagons was adding in a more symmetrical pattern for the roof. As you saw a moment ago, I basically just made a neat pattern on a large sheet, and then stacked it downwards onto the roof to copy the design over. These wagons are meant to look pretty run down, as they'd been through a lot of travelling and are, at the end of the day, old repurposed buildings. Lastly for this wagon, I just worked on adjusting the back of it to align it more with the design I'd put on the front. Scar's original business in the season was a roof waxing service and so we created an entire cart dedicated to wax. The first thing I did was to adjust the roof like I had on the last wagon, and then I had a neat idea to switch up the lettering on the top of the cart, to make it look more like it was made out of wax. I used end stone bricks to imitate the wax, which I think worked perfectly, and then I placed some candles on top to make it look slightly more messy and organic. To fit alongside the wax, I added some flower designs onto the roof to make the cart look more like it was overgrown, before adding in some player heads that looked like bees flying around the wagon, like they had escaped from the beehives that Scarred built on the side. The penultimate wagon of a train is this very tall tower, which Scar used to keep his villagers inside of. He named this the Emerald Hotel, seeing as it was meant to be based off of a repurposed hotel which he had stolen or just borrowed permanently. I tried to incorporate emeralds as much as possible into the build to fit the name, adding some into the roof design and adding a large emerald design above the front door. I also then updated the stacks of emeralds on the side of the building, adding some invisible item frames with the emeralds inside to make it look like the pile was overflowing. I really love how this part turned out. The final wagon to work on is this really cool one, which is meant to be an abandoned factory which got turned into a wagon. This is probably my favourite of them all, and is a prime example of Scar's style, with all of the unique shapes and elements coming together to make a build with a lot of character. I just adjusted it by adding in a couple more industrial looking blocks like iron bars and some extra balconies. The hardest part about this wagon is definitely that Scar never got round to making the interior, so I needed to do that myself. As you can see, the inside was a pretty weird shape to work with, but I managed to make it work, turning it into a cosy area with lots of industrial designs and barrels for storage. I attempted to add as many small details as I could, each with a purpose to bring as much character to the build as possible. The storage element was probably the most important part though, as I found this huge pile of shulker boxes outside, which I cleaned up next, while also fixing up some of the terrain that they had destroyed. With the wagon all finished up, I then added some small details into the muddy path that its tyres had left behind, 
mixing in some stairs to make the ground look even more destroyed. Talking about stairs, I also added some alongside all of the pathways, just to add a bit of extra depth to the paths and make them look slightly less flat. These small dents along the side of the path would also have functionality, working as a draining system to prevent floods considering the base is built right next to the ocean, so this would probably be useful. As well as this, I took the time to edit the entrance to the bottom area a bit more, making it slightly more grand with an archway to enter. This would help to more clearly divide it from the rest of Botum. The next building I moved on to adjusting was the Swagon Garage. As before, I just added some extra details in my style. It's pretty hard to notice each detail I add and switch up, but I'll do some side-by-side -side transformation shots later to really show the difference. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. My plan with this series is to keep the changes to the starter bases more subtle, to help preserve them a bit more. I'll then be saving the larger changes, or in this case building an entire new area for the mega bases. I wanted to really make the area look a lot more abandoned, as the garage is meant to be a repurposed hotel, named Pine Top Lodge. To help bring the old hotel to life more, I added in this drained fountain out the front, which is a relic from the old building which has been left behind to rot. One thing I noticed with the build that confused me is that the wagon's tire tracks lead right into the sea, but there's no way the wagon would survive that deep underwater or be able to float. And so I decided to raise up the landscape, creating a strip of land which it had driven over to get to its current spot in Botum. I surrounded this with some pretty rocky terrain to form a rough coastline which goes along either side. I then continued for tire tracks to show that the wagon had been driving past and also added in a bunch of scars trees along the sides of the terrain, with a couple that had been knocked over by the wagon on its way past. I noticed this island by the coast which had a partially destroyed house on it, and so I decided it would be a good idea to give it a glow up. As it was on a small secluded island by the ocean, I thought it would be fitting to turn it into a lighthouse, which would help guide nearby ships ensuring they don't get struck by the nearby rocks. On the inside, I just built some basic interior, all connected by a ladder which takes you to the top of the lighthouse. Overall, I'm happy with how this expansion came out. I think it fits the base well and serves a fitting purpose to the storyline of the area. We're almost done with this starter base area, which is exciting as I had some pretty big plans for the mega base, which we'll be getting to very soon. For the hat factory, I didn't make many changes, However, what I did do is remove all of the diamonds from on top of the giant hat that sits on the factory, and I moved them into the giant hourglasses that we transformed last episode. I completely forgot last week that Scar ended up actually being the most rich hermit this season, and so I filled up his hourglass with all of the diamond blocks that I'd removed from the hat, leaving it overflowing out of the hourglass. The last thing Scar made in this area was this travel agency. He unfortunately didn't have time to do the top levels of the interior, and so I made this pretty standard looking office, which I could copy onto all of the levels of the building. Finally, I moved on to the mining wagon. This is meant to be an excavator, which contains cars filled with blocks that are for sale. As a small spoiler, I'm going to be working on a market area up in the sky base very soon, and so I didn't feel the need to expand this with any more carts with blocks for sale. However, I did add some stores onto each cart with barrels filled with the blocks for sale, so the shop would at least be functional. Scar spoke about having redstone systems that would sort out the sales, but I never want to touch redstone, and so manually using barrels should work fine. I quickly then cleaned up the edge between Cubs Canyon and the bottom area, mixing the terrain a bit more, and then I finally added some more rocks around the swagon area just to make the landscape look a bit more rough. And that was it for the starter base changes. As I mentioned before, I really didn't change much, but I'm glad I didn't as I seriously love what Scar built here. It has so much character which I was very scared I'd accidentally take away or ruin, but I think I just about got away with the edits that I made.
Before moving on to the mega base, I wanted to spend a minute or two incorporating some of your comment ideas, as this is as much my build as it is yours. The first comment I found, which I loved the idea of, was from Gauksig197. They left a lot of feedback, but the idea I loved was at the bottom of their message, which was to add boats around Botum. I thought these would fit perfectly in the Swagon area, near the lighthouse we'd just created. To create these boats, I just took Scar's Swagon and adjusted it with a sail and other details to make it water safe. So Scar would be able to go anywhere to sell you anything, even across the seas. You'd never be safe. To go along with the boats, I decided to make a small boathouse next to the lighthouse, which would work as a place to provide maintenance on the water swagons. I kept the design pretty simple to not take away from the surrounding area, and added on a small dock with a crane to help load and unload cargo. I plan to add more boats around other areas to expand Votum, with more styles fitting in with the themes of the surrounding areas, but that's for the future. I also had comments left by Bavish1 and Red Panda Gaming to adjust the diamond sand timers, filling mumbos with copper and hollowing out the back of greens to make them more accurate for season. E. Way had the cool idea to make the old train tunnel, which is no longer being used, look more abandoned. This was pretty quick to do, I just added in a bunch of cobwebs and dragon eggs, which looked kind of like big spider eggs. I also fenced the area off with a do not enter sign before adding some deserted barrels and pickaxes along the walls. This is now a pretty dangerous place to visit. I would love to incorporate more comments, but Scar's mega base is going to take a while to build, so I'll have to call it there. Make sure to leave a comment with your ideas as they might be incorporated next week. Also, this is unrelated, but I have a Discord server now. Please make sure to join it. The link is in the description. And now we can finally move on to the mega base. Unlike all of the other mega bases in Botum, I'm going to have to make this pretty much from the ground up. I couldn't find much information online as to what Scar's original plans were, other than some relatively vague descriptions, and so I could pretty much do whatever I wanted. The only guidelines I found were that Scar wanted to make a floating steampunk city, built on clouds and the side of the huge mountains he had created on top of Green's base. This is going to go all of the way to build height, so it's a pretty big project to take on, but I was ready. Or at least I thought I was ready. You've probably noticed I've gone through this footage very fast, and that's because I don't want to waste your time. I deleted all of this. This was because I found this audio clip of Scar describing his original plans, and I just didn't think it matched what he wanted to make. Envision what a mechanical mountain might look like with a dash of Anno 1889, maybe a little smidge of Bioshock Infinite with a whole lot of steampunk and it is going to be absolutely amazing. Coming back for try two, I decided I'd start the base by building a lower section first, which would be more built into the mountain. The first thing I built was this larger tower, which is built into the side of the tallest peak. Coming out of this tower, I added some gears to make it more of a mechanical looking build. As the build goes up, I built it outwards, creating a large room on the top which could be used as a central base of the mega base, where Scar could actually live. This ended up being kind of like a steampunk version of Stark Tower. I'd love to have made it taller, but as I expanded the cliff last episode to increase the size of Green's base, there wasn't actually much room to work with before I hit the height limit. This central build would be a great landmark for me to use to build the rest of the base around. Building at first would give me more of a sense of direction for the rest of the build to follow, which is something I think I missed in the original version I built and deleted before. Throughout this tower and the rest of the build, I tried to use a lot of copper. This is the season where copper was added to the game, and Scar was addicted to building with it. Under the tower, I built out a wooden platform and began building the first of many smaller houses. The plan is that the lower area of the base will be made out of much more rustic looking houses, for the farmers and the workers to live in. These people would be in charge of the upkeep for the rest of the city. Above will later make the Cloud City, where houses will be much more large and steampunk looking. I wanted to make sure there was a very clear divide in these styles. I ended up making this very cosy looking house, 
for expanding the supports holding it up a bit more and adding in a crane which is transporting some resources upwards. I also wanted to really play into the idea of the base being a mechanical mountain and so I turned this smaller peak of the mountain into a metal frame which the workers had not yet finished building and turned into a mountain like the rest. Around it I added in some supports for safety and a bunch of barrels and resources being lifted up like this giant copper beam. To make this area accessible, I connected it to the smaller house with a very dangerous looking bridge, with some ropes made of fences hanging down below it. One thing I knew from the start that I wanted to add is a giant copper statue of Scar. This would fit the steampunk theme, but also as I think Scar is one of the most likely people to build a giant statue of himself. Before it could be made though, I need somewhere to put it, and so I built up this circular platform on the side of the mountain, with a very stylish floor design which will be covered up by the statues in a minute anyway. Down the side of the podium, I added a bunch of scaffolding which had been left by the workers after they'd finished constructing it. As usual, I would never be able to build something like this, and so I asked my friend Bob Geem, who was amazing at building organics. I also asked Bob to include Jelly next to Scar on the statue. Unfortunately, Jelly passed away at the start of the year, but it felt wrong having a statue of Scar without them, and this works as a good monument to remember them by. To finish the lower area, I built up another house on the other side of the steampunk tower. As you can see, I tried to include lots of shapes for the houses to make them more Scar-like unlike the rectangular buildings I made in the original failed version. Around the house, I added in a rope bridge and lots of scaffolding towers, which hold everything up. This was made to make the area look a lot more rustic, with barrels and crates being left around everywhere. As well as this, I added in some hanging lanterns to light everything up, and a bunch of cranes moving resources around. This really helped to bring the area to life. I also then expanded the area, wrapping the supports and houses to go all along the side of the mountain, making everything feel a lot more grand. Connected by a ladder is also the mining area, with lots of copper rocks located down below, which are being excavated by the miners and brought up to build with. On top of this, I created some interiors for the new houses, keeping them all very cosy. I wanted them to feel very lived in. This was also the point where I went back and added some interior into the previously made houses. And now we're going vertical. I created these huge clouds which go around the entire sky of the mountain. I created the clouds using cobwebs and then textured them with some glass panes and stained glass blocks to make them look more fluffy and to give them a flat surface which on the top of you could walk on. Each of these clouds will contain a uniquely themed area, making up a large network of areas to explore. Each will also include a dock, with airships being available to help citizens travel from one cloud to another. The first area we'll be working on up here though is the airship factory. This is where the ships will be designed, tested and built. Taking note from Scar's work, I try to include lots of different types of blocks in my palette, dividing the area into two main sections. The factory area, which is on the right side, and the planning and testing area, which is on the left. I just built up each area, creating a variety of unique shapes, especially in the rooftops, with part being an arched glass roof, which looks very cool from the interior. I also added this domed roof on top of the tallest part of the building, which goes all of the way up to build height so I couldn't make it any taller, sadly. For the factory area, I added these very stereotypical factory roofs, which are blowing out lots of smoke, which I added using campfires. In front of the factory, I built up a small dock area, where airships could drop people off and items could be stored in large barrels and crates. Moving inside, I tried to make the factory area look as cold and bleak as possible, using lots of deep slate for the walls and the floors. On the back of the factory, I added in these loading bays, where airships could be parked and picked up from, 
To keep this organized, I numbered each loading bay individually. Going back to the inside, I just filled the area with lots of containers before moving on to the main area of the building, the planning area. I wanted this room to be very big and open to make full use of the open glass roof, letting in a lot of natural light. I raised up the back part of the interior, creating a big balcony where you can view the lower area from. Down here, I just added in a balloon for one of the blimps, which is currently being designed. One thing you'll notice is that there are no airships parked at or around the factory. That's because I'll be designing the airships and adding them all in around the build at the end. It'll be the final touch to bring everything together. Green built this observatory on the top of the mountain to view the moon from, but it's caught one big issue. The mountain in front of it blocks the view completely. I decided it would be fitting to move it instead to be on top of one of the clouds, so there'd be an unobstructed view of the moon from the telescope. Once it was pasted down on a cloud, I changed up some of the blocks to fit the steampunk feel, also adding in some gears on the building which should be used to help move the telescope upwards and downwards. I then built up a small dock around the entire thing for the building to sit on, adding in a small solar powered dish next to the observatory, with power lines connecting the two together. Finally, to finish the area up, I added in a dock for ships to park at, and then moved to the interior. I kept the interior pretty standard, with the lowest part being more of a lounge area. For the top part, I just built up a seat under the telescope so you can sit down while you're looking at the moon. To tie everything together, I added some more crates around the entire area. The next area I began building is going to be the largest, making up the entire living area of the Cloud City. This is where the rich will live, high above the rest of Botum. The area is going to be split into two separate clouds, with a lower city and a higher one. Both will then be connected with a big copper bridge. I wanted to do what I think Scar would do, and make each building completely unique and its own kind of style. Normally in creative mode for a build this big, you'd make two or three unique houses, and then copy them around the entire build. But I just didn't think doing that would fit with this being Scar's mega base. This did mean though that it took a lot longer to build, with each of the houses taking one to two hours to design. This house ended up being my favorite to build, I gave it a slightly more industrial look using lots of bricks for the walls and calcite for the lower areas of the building. On top of the roof, I added a couple of mushrooms just as an extra detail to add some extra colour. I didn't want to put this area on a raised dock, instead I wanted it to feel really built into the cloud. To decorate, I added in this small fountain and some cargo around the whole thing. For the bridge, I kept it very thick reinforcing it with an arched support to ensure it stays upright at all times. For the lower area, I started with this really tall house, which looks a lot like a stereotypical steampunk Minecraft house. Even with it being based on a very stereotypical design, I tried to put my own spin on it, with some extra rooms jutting out from the main building, and a large chimney which goes up the side of it. I also then added in a square house, which I built mostly using loom blocks. The back of the blocks has a really cool design, which looks almost like old tiled pieces of wood, which I really liked. I also tried something more unique for the roof, building it using beehives to give it a slight yellow colour. To tie the area together more, I added in a slightly raised viewing platform, which you can use to view the huge statue of Scar and Jelly next to it. It also includes some spy glasses so you can look down at the rest of Botum, hundreds of blocks below. As well as this, I added in some planters with birch trees and a small dock area for transport. Moving on to the interiors, I tried to once again keep them quite cozy, using a lot of wood in the designs. As you can imagine, building all of the interiors took quite a while. It was well worth it though, as being able to fully explore each house really makes the build a lot more fun to walk around. Overall, this village area is pretty small, so each house would cost a lot of money to buy. I really like how it turned out though, it gives some amazing views of Botum, which would be great to have outside of your window. Moving on to the next area, 
I began work on the market zone that I mentioned earlier. This area is where people would set up their market stands to sell goods, all in one place. This would basically work as Scar's shopping area for the season. I created a raised area to build all of the market stores on, creating a very dirty look texture ground, which looks like it's been walked on a lot over the years and been very, very damaged. I wanted this area to look slightly more run down than the rest of the floating city, which I think I achieved. Once the layout for the stores had been made, I built each up, using a mix of red wool for some of the cloth and yellow for the others. I also mixed in some other blocks with the wool to make the cloth look slightly more worn. Next I went around and gave each market store its own personality, adding in a huge variety of shop types. These would mostly just be for show though, Scar could switch any of these up to be any blocks that he wanted to actually sell. I used item frames quite a lot to make it look like items were spread all around the place, creating a huge mess. This is definitely an area you could imagine loads of people being in at once, trying to get a good deal. Finally, at the end of the market island, I created this cleaner looking area. This design might look very familiar to you. It's inspired by the Scarland entrance. I decided to make this stand at the back where you can buy tickets and a flight to Scarland. Here you'd be picked up in a blimp and flown over to Scarland in a VIP experience. I thought this would be a nice idea to just tie the two seasons together. The last set of islands that we had to work on would be the storage islands. These would be where loads of parts would be located, that are required to build the airships as well as some other barrels and crates that are being stored. The islands are pretty self-explanatory in design, I just built up a bunch of scaffolding which workers would be able to use to get to higher parts of the ships. As well as this, I added this huge crane design at the back of the first dock. I incorporated a few steampunk gears into the design, which would be used to help lower and raise any heavy items. Once the storage dock was done, I just added a bunch of barrels all around it to make it look less messy. I decided that it would make more sense for the market to be located here at the back of the base, considering it is meant to look quite run down and old, and so I switched up the positioning of the market island and the docks island. I then quickly just built up the second dock island using the same designs as the first. It's basically just an extension of the same thing, to provide even more storage space. I'm very excited to say that we're now in the final stretch. I just had to add in some final details like some farms along the bottom of the base, and a lot more trees to make the forest more dense. I also added in a couple more decorative clouds to make the base look a bit more busy. The final thing to add was the airships. I'm awful at building vehicles, but I gave it my best shot. I can imagine that Scar would probably make some insanely cool airship designs, but this had to do as it was the best I could come up with. I've been working on this video now for well over 100 hours, and I'm so excited to be finishing this base up. It's been a lot of fun, but it's taken a very, very long time to make. If you managed to make it this far into the video, please do let me know in the comments and leave a like. Thank you all so much for the support on these transformation videos. If we could hit 5,000 likes, that would be absolutely insane. I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching.